Okay guys, we are at the grocery store and I know you guys know I love Costco and I do, but there are some things I can't get at Costco. So we're at a different grocery store today, gonna pick up a few things and uh, we're gonna get home and do some food prep. So let's grab what we need. First thing we're gonna grab is some rice pasta. I like this brown rice pasta. This stuff, if I get the white, right pot, white rice pasta, it digests way too fast. I get like a quick spike and then a crash. So I go with the brown rice. It digests a little slower, um, but still digests really well. It feels better than regular pasta, so that's why I go with the rice pasta. And in the off season, pasta is super easy to eat. I don't ever get sick of it, so. They don't have rice pasta at Costco, that's why I've come here. They also don't have my favorite rice, this is my sushi rice. It's a little more expensive, like it's eight bucks for this, but if you guys try this rice, if you guys try sushi rice, you will probably never go back to normal rice. I know you've obviously had it when like, you eat sushi and stuff like that, but if you have it just like rice and chicken, it just tastes better than regular rice. Somebody left this shit in my cart. Next thing we're gonna grab is some eggs. I go through a ton of eggs. These are omega-3 free run eggs and it does matter because you're always trying to get as, as many omega-3s in your diet as you can. So, a staple. And we always gotta have some Ezekiel bread, this is flourless bread, sprouted grain. It's, uh, it's actually a complete protein, so it goes with a good breakfast. I'm gonna grab a little ground chicken. Sometimes you get sick of ground beef. It's just a, it's a good alternative. A little bit lower in fat. Okay, so, one of my meals is uh, green, not green. One of my meals is Greek yogurt and granola with some berries. So we're gonna grab some granola. This has extra omega-3 in it, so. I don't really care about that in this, to be honest. This is just to add, the Greek yogurt is the base of the meal. I just, I can't eat it without a little bit of granola in it. No sugar added ketchup. So this is the only ketchup I can eat now. When I try and eat like the regular shit, it tastes too sweet for me. So this is it. I usually go through a ton of it. So I'm gonna get three of these. Uh, these are, so Dorian, uh, I don't know, a lot of you guys know who Dorian, Dorian Hamilton is, a friend of mine. He's a major food guy. He turned me on to these. These are awesome. Chicken and rice meals with a little bit of this on your chicken, and you're all set. I like to buy in bulk. Okay, so everybody's got a vice in their diet. Usually, you know, you guys know I like pizza and burgers and all that, but this is like my daily vice. This is probably the worst thing I have in my diet on a daily basis because I don't really know what this shit's made of. I know this is super low, so whatever, but. I feel like you're adding chemicals to your body that you don't need, but I just, I'm hooked and I drink a ton of water when I add this, these things into it, these flavored, you know, little liquids. So it's the one thing, I know you guys are gonna shit on me for having it in my diet, but I gotta have it, so. I usually end up spending like 50 bucks just on these. And I go through Tang. The Tang orange is really good. But the Tang Kool-Aid is also pretty good. So I'm gonna grab both. And the, the Fruit Punch Kool-Aid is pretty good. 
Grab a couple of those. And I got the Mio, the Mio Cherry Blackberry, this shit. Awesome. So I got a, I think I got like 50 bucks worth of fucking Mio in my cart, but whatever. This, I gotta have some strawberry watermelon too, so. All right, I think that's enough. So sometimes I'll grab a couple of these. It's kind of like an alternative to chips. I feel like I feel like chips are really shitty for you. So sometimes I don't want to go total shitty. I go with in between shitty, like this. Some ketchup, some barbecue, we're all set. All right guys, so that's a quick trip to the grocery store. We got all the extra stuff. There's no steaks and no chicken breasts in here and stuff like that, but we got all the extras we need to keep our diet on point. You know, we got some granola for the Greek yogurt, we got some rice and pasta and stuff like that. Uh, we got some of our condiments and stuff. It's not a cheap endeavor. You know, this just side trip costs more than, or it costs still a good amount of money compared to like my main trip where I get all my steaks and my chicken and all that stuff. But this is what it is. We gotta get the food in, we gotta make sure we stay on point by eating the things we like so we don't miss meals and shit like that. So uh, all these extras are gonna help me do that. So now we gotta get home, prep some food, and uh, we'll get a meal in for you guys. What's going on guys? We're back in my kitchen. Sorry I had a little bit of a hiatus, but we are gonna make some food today. So I got some ground chicken here and some rice. Now the reason I got Uncle Ben's is because a lot of you guys don't wanna pay the money for the sushi rice, understandably, because it is expensive. Uh, these are ready-made bags. You don't have to get these. Obviously, you can get the regular rice, right? Regular converted rice, whatever you want to use. Um, but I did it for just for ease, so I have it in my fridge now, or in my cupboard now. These are just uh, little baggies like this. And they have 25 grams of carbs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is have two of them because I want at least 50 grams of carbs per meal. So I throw two of these. Now, the easy thing about these is you just throw them in boiling water. So the whole bag, right in the boiling water. And uh, it takes like six, seven minutes and then you got rice finished. So it's a lot more convenient for me if I forget to make rice one day or something than uh, throwing it in my rice cooker because my rice cooker takes like 45 minutes. So those are for ease. What I have here is a tray of chicken. I'm gonna show you guys just how I prep my chicken. Uh, we're not doing a chicken meal. I just wanna show you kind of how I get my chicken ready for the week. Now, most of my meals I prepare as I'm ready to eat, but chicken I kind of cook in bulk, throw it in the fridge, and then I might heat it up in the frying pan or something like that when it's time to eat. But I like to have chicken made, that way I always have a good source of protein in the fridge, ready made, ready to eat, I'm never gonna run out of food that way. Carbs are easy to come by. I can make potatoes in five minutes, I can throw a bag of rice in the boiling water in six, seven minutes, it's done. I can boil some pasta, I can do that. It's all simple. And uh, I can always have a bowl of oatmeal if I want, whatever I want, right? But the chicken, I want to make sure it's ready. I, I don't want to fuss with it. I just want to make sure my pro I always have a good source of protein ready in the fridge. So that's why I do this. So let's get to work. First thing we're going to do is get the chicken in the oven. Cookie sheet. Okay. Take your cookie sheet and line it with tin foil. The reason I do that is just so it's easier to cook afterwards. Just throw the, I don't want to put the chicken right on the cookie sheet. Sometimes I got to scrub the chicken grease and shit off it. This is easier. When I'm done, I just take the tin foil off and then give the pan a wash and that's it. So we're gonna get a little bit of cooking spray. We're just gonna spray the tin foil so the chicken doesn't stick to it. Okay. And this is not complicated at all. All you're gonna do is line your chicken breast 
up on the cookie sheet, just like so. Get, get a big enough cookie sheet that they all fit. This is the best way to make sure you never ever run out of food. Okay, I got like, I don't know what I have here, nine chicken breasts all together. So this will last me, like one of these chicken breasts is about six ounces cooked. And I eat about six ounces cooked. So I got nine protein portion meals here. So that's very, very convenient to have in the fridge. Now, prepping them, there's a bunch of different things you can do. I found this spice. It's uh, Valerie's original flavors. It's also known as uh, TBQ spice. If you're in the Windsor area, you know TB Tunnel Barbecue spice. If not, it's kind of like an all season spice. So it's not really that special. But I'm just gonna put some on here. It doesn't really matter to me how good the flavoring is when I throw it in the oven, because I'm gonna reheat it and recook it into some other meal when I'm, when I'm done. So I just wanna give it a little bit of flavor, but I'm generally gonna eat this with like a barbecue sauce or a honey mustard or something, or I'm gonna mix it into some pasta or something like that. So I'm not like trying to make it taste amazing in the oven. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of spice just for a little flavor. Okay, so the oven I have preheated already to 405. So we're gonna throw this in the oven at 405. Generally takes about 40 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes. Throw that in, set the cooking time to 40 minutes, start. Okay, now while that's cooking, I'm gonna make the meal I wanna eat right now. So. My water's almost boiling, so I'll get the rice thrown in there in a second. And the other thing I have set up here, this pot back here has about this much water in it, okay? And then I put a strainer in there. And the reason I do that is because I'm gonna steam my asparagus. You don't wanna boil asparagus, because it's gonna be gross and mushy. And you're gonna boil all the nutrients right out of it. So instead, I like to steam it. But before I throw it in the, in the strainer, I wanna cut, I wanna cut all the ends off because even when they're steamed, they're just too hard to eat. Okay, so cut those off. Just throw your asparagus right in the pan, okay? Right in the pot and don't let it overcook because asparagus, if you let it cook too long, will definitely turn into mush. And then it still might make, not taste bad when it's hot, but you know, I'm gonna put this in the fridge for future meals. And if it turns to mush, they're not gonna wanna eat it. I also don't know why I'm using this knife. I should be using a bigger knife, but. So this is food prep, right? Like, I want this asparagus for this meal, but why would I cook just like one little portion of asparagus? So I figure if I'm gonna cook the asparagus, I might as well cook the asparagus. So I got a whole bag of asparagus in there. That way, whatever I'm done with, there we go, whatever's left over. I throw in the uh, fridge and I have asparagus for my next few meals. Now this is how we're going to steam it. So you're going to throw a top on it, okay? Throw a top on the strainer like so. That will steam, it won't take long. The water is boiling now. I'm going to take these, throw them in there for six, seven minutes. My pan is hot. A little bit of pan. Cooking spray. Actually, this isn't pan, it's Kirkland from my favorite grocery store on earth. Open the ground turkey, ground chicken. We don't wanna eat the wax paper that comes with it, so make sure you get that out. Okay, and then I just like to break it up. I don't wanna leave it like that, like one brick of ground chicken. And I'll keep, I'll keep breaking it up as it cooks to make sure it's 
nice and fine by the time it's done. Now all I'm gonna use to season it with is my, these are staples in all my meals. If you guys are gonna watch, watch the channel regularly, you're gonna notice. Okay, just a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic powder. Okay. And we'll just let it cook. It's gonna be a little leaner than your ground beef, so I wanna get some fats in the meal, so I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna cut up this uh, avocado for a little bit of extra fat in my meal. You guys have noticed a theme in all my, all my, uh, all my meals, I use a lot of avocado. I like the way it tastes, it kinda makes food get, go down easier. If you don't like the taste, then you can use something else, use olive oil or a different fat source that you like, maybe coconut oil. For me, I really like avocado, and I also need to get the fiber in, because I don't have a lot of fiber in my diet, so I like to get a little bit of fiber from the avocado. Now, there is some fat in ground chicken, so I'm not gonna use the whole avocado, but I do need some healthy fats, so I'm gonna use half the avocado. The other half. Throw in the fridge for future use. favorite condiment. You gotta make sure you get it in. All right, that's it. This, this is all it is, every fucking day. This is what it is, every day. Get up, make my food, make sure I have food ready. It's like a constant fucking thing. Everybody talks about how easy bodybuilding is. Well. Yeah, it's easy, it doesn't require a ton of fucking skill, but it requires a ton of discipline. You gotta be on it, man. You wake up, prep your food, put it in the fridge, make sure it's there. This is what it takes to put on muscle. It doesn't matter if you wanna be open bodybuilding, classic bodybuilding, men's physique, it doesn't fucking matter. If you don't even compete, let's just say you wanna look good for the beach. This is what it takes. You gotta make sure you get the meals in. You gotta make sure you do the cardio. You gotta make sure you do the fucking training. You gotta make sure you sleep. You gotta make sure you take your supplements. You gotta make sure you take your gear if you take gear. It's all part of it. Everything is part of it. It's not, well, I'm doing this so I don't have to do that, or I'm doing that so I don't have to do this. If you wanna grow at the optimal level, if you wanna be the best, take your genetics to the top, to the, to the place where they peak, and you've reached your genetic potential, you have to do it all, okay? 5% matters, 10% matters. Some people say, oh, supplements don't do anything. Even if the supplements do 5%, they do something, okay? Every aspect matters of what we're doing. We're not, we're not playing games. We're not just trying to like, you know, for those of you who are competing, we're not just trying to look good for Instagram. We're not just trying to make like really cool before and after photos. We're trying to build muscle. We're trying to build a physique that when I stand on stage under the fucking lights and I stand next to the guy over here, the judge is gonna look at me and go, that guy fucking put in the time, that guy put in the effort, and he looks the best, and he's gonna win. That's what we're doing here, okay? And if you're trying to look good for the beach and you don't compete, you're gonna fucking bitch when the summer rolls around and you haven't put in the time and effort. All of these things matter, and it has to, your program has to be fully encompassing of everything. If you don't like preparing your meals, if you don't like having to eat all the time, if you don't like the fact that this thing is in the back of your mind all day long, every day, the sport's not for you, okay? This shit is in my head for 20 years straight, every day. When I'm talking to somebody, when I'm doing stuff for work, when I'm doing, I'm hanging out with my wife, when I'm hanging out with my friends, there's a timer back here going, what time did you eat last? What time are you supposed to eat? It's fucking constantly there. I don't get a break from it. You don't get a break in bodybuilding. It's 24 seven. So you can have your frontal brain that is like focused on whoever you're around and what you're doing, but there's the backside that's gotta always have that timer running and always be in, the, in your ear going, it's time to eat, it's time to eat. Make sure you go get your meal, make sure you get your shit ready. That's part of what this is, is that's part of why it's hard is, is, is having that 
voice in the back of your head all the time reminding you, hey, it's that time, man. Go put your fucking meal together. Okay, so the chicken, once it gets a little brown, like you see, like there's no more pink, that's pretty much ready, okay? Now the rice has been in there for eight minutes. Should also be ready, so I have some tongs here. I'm just gonna pull this out, okay? And you can see in the bag that that rice is done. I'm just gonna pull it out, throw it in the strainer. Throw it in the sink, let that drain. This is done. Okay, so our rice is done. I'm just gonna take it out of the bags. Okay, like so. Simple and easy. You know what? I think I'm just gonna do one bag. On my off days, okay, I'm just gonna do one bag. You know why I'm gonna tell you that? Is on my off days, I reduce my carbs quite a bit. And only right now, not in my off season when I'm trying to grow. Right now I'm in an in-between phase where I'm just trying to clean up my health, get my blood work back to normal, and I'm not in a growing phase. So on my off days, I try and reduce my carbs so I'm not, because I'm not using them. I'm not like going full blast in the gym. So I kind of have a, it's like an in-between phase right now. So right now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this amount of rice right here. That's it. I think it's a good amount. Okay, and it's no big thing like this. I'll just have this in the fridge. I'll have this in the fridge for my next meal. It'll already be cooked, just sitting in this bag. So it's a wonderful thing. Throw it in a bowl, throw it in the fridge. Okay. We're gonna do Six ounces. Six ounces of ground chicken. That's what six ounces looks like, okay? And again, I have about three or four ounces there left over for my next meal. I'll combine it with something else or more ground chicken and that'll be left over. We're gonna throw this in a Tupperware container because we're gonna use this pot or this frying pan again right now. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little spinach to our meal because spinach is extremely healthy so loaded in potassium, loaded in different micronutrients, and it's also gonna add a little bit of fiber. So we're gonna add a little spinach. All we're gonna do is throw about a teaspoon or two of olive oil in the pan. And I got some baby spinach here. I'm just gonna do a handful, okay? Handful of baby spinach. Now look, you guys might think that's stupid. It's all, oh, what the fuck is he adding spinach for? Look, man, it's a very small thing, a very easy thing to do. Asparagus is done. It's a very easy thing to do to just saute up some spinach. And I, I actually would have thrown this right in my ground chicken if I had the exact amount I was gonna eat. But because I'm gonna throw half that in the fridge, I don't want wilted spinach in it. So we'll just saute it up a little bit afterwards by itself. We're not killing all the nutrients because they're not totally wilting it out of like to death. We're just gonna, and then that adds a little bit of olive oil to the meal too for flavor. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our avocado. I already cut it up when it was in its little pocket. So I can just scoop it out 
into little chunks. Okay, simple. Everything's simple. Everything's got to be easy or else I'm not going to want to do it. Okay, that's really the key to everything. And as you guys see in all my videos. Now, when this is done, you can add anything to it. You can add any barbecue sauce you want to it, uh, honey mustard, whatever you want to add. For me, I'm good with some Frank's Red Hot. So, that's it. That meal's done. So, Stoves off, okay. So again, guys, this isn't rocket science. I'm not fucking Gordon Ramsay. What do we do? Rice, ground chicken, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of avocado. We have our carb base, we have a good amount of protein, we have a good amount of fats, we have good micronutrients in here. It's really a complete meal, okay? I'm gonna stack a big liter of water next to it, and I'm gonna get this shit in. So you guys gotta go so I can eat. Hope you guys got a lot from the video. Stay tuned. We're gonna have more videos like this coming soon.